And can I tell you, that's what an invitation does. An invitation allows you to give God praise before you see the blessing. An invitation causes you to lift up your hands before God does the healing. An invitation allows you to tell God thank you before your children come back home. An invitation causes you to tell God hallelujah before your body is healed. Good morning, and welcome to the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church broadcast. You are invited to come and join us during any of our Sunday morning worship services at 2714 Frederick Boulevard, Portsmouth, Virginia. Remember to let the redeemed of the Lord say so.
the city of David, there is a blessing. In the city of David, I have some joy. In the city of David, I have some peace. In the city of David, your healing has just been born. In the city of David, God's getting ready to turn it around. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, God sees you and he can bless you where you are. Oh God, I like that. Here's what he does. He says to them, I have an invitation for you. In the city of David, a savior has been born. And you're probably sitting there thinking, well, if God does have more for me, why did he leave me in the dark? If God wanted to bless me, why didn't he just bring it to me in the field? If God really wanted to see me prosper, if he wanted to see me heal, if he wanted to see you reconcile, if he wanted to see life better for you now than it has been in the past, why didn't he do it while he was in the field? But you got to know the same way I opened up the envelope and God gave me hope for tomorrow when I was sad in my present. God says sometimes before I turn it around I just want to invite you to be a part of the process and God said today I have an invitation for you. How then? Here it is. How then? I'm almost done. How then do you get to the party if you feel like you're stuck in the field? How, how, how do you move from watching the sheep being active and unproductive? Non-productive too, to finally get into the place where you can walk in the blessing, you can flow in the favor, you can get what God has for you. I submit to you, it's elementary from here, because in every party invitation, if you're going to show up to the party, they ask you to give them an RSVP. I got three people over here. That, that if... That if you're going to move from where you are to where God wants you to be, if you're going to finally get a smile back and your joy back and your peace back, uh, he says you've got to move uh, from what you've been doing and where you are and give an RSVP. RSVP is in the text. Notice that's what the shepherds do. They get this invitation. Uh, they are now startled by the angel. The angel says there's a party going on and God wants you to show up to the party. So if he wants you to show up to the party, RSVP. R. He says first you've got to release. Look at the text. Uh, the Bible says that they talk to one another. One shepherd looks at the next shepherd and says, we ought to go to Bethlehem. As a matter of fact, uh, he uses this term. It says, let's go to Bethlehem. This is important uh, because Luke is writing about it and Luke uh, has notes about uh, this particular city. This city is known to be a great city. Luke talks about Jerusalem. It's mentioned 650 times in the Old Testament, 146 times in the New Testament. There is no city quite like Jerusalem. The problem is uh, they can't be in Jerusalem uh, and in the field at the same time. In order for them to get to the place where Jesus is, uh, they've got to learn to release where they already are. And can I submit to you that as long as you're holding on uh, to your hurt, as long as you're holding on to your pain, uh, as long as you're holding on to jealousy, as long as you're holding on to frustration, it's going to be hard for you to get what God has for you. And God told me to tell you if you're ready to come out the dark into the marvelous light, you got to learn how to release. Uh, you got to, uh, I got kids, I, I watch folks, so you got to learn how to let it go. Uh, you you got to learn uh, how sometimes while you thought that it was supposed to be temporary you have now made it permanent and God says that's when you've got to let it go you're not going to raise your hand uh, but you remember you just said you were going to be at that job for a couple of months uh, get yourself together now it's been about six years uh, and now it's time for you to release it and let it go uh, because it's not until you let it go uh, that God can then let you go uh, like, I remember I remember uh, you said that this is not really going to be my boo uh, they're just going to be this part time thing until I get a permanent thing uh, so you've been around for a little while now you don't gave up all the cookies and you stuck in it but God told me to tell you if you release it then God will help you retrieve what he has left sometimes you gotta let go in order to go and what Jesus says is that there are gonna be moments watch this when the blessing is in Jerusalem you gotta leave the field so that you can find God's favor come on I didn't make it up that's what the Hebrew writer said but the Hebrew writer says sometimes you gotta lay aside every weight that's a reason leave the set you. And can I submit that as long as you're holding on to what was, uh, you can never go forward to what will be. Uh, and God told me to tell you he's got more favor. He's got more joy. He's got more peace. Uh, he's got businesses for you to open. He's got ministries for you to launch. Uh, he's got souls that need to be saved. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, you've got to learn to release it. Sometimes in order to get what God has, you have to release what you already have. 
Notice what they say. They say, let's go to Bethlehem. Uh, in other words, uh, we, we've got to leave the sheep in the field. We've, uh, uh, we've got to walk away from the dog. We uh, uh, have to move from where we are to where you want me to go. Uh, and man, I submit that every now and then in order uh, for you to receive everything that God has for you in the next, uh, you've got to be willing to reevaluate what you have in your present and understand that God always uh, has thoughts about your hope and your future. That God always decided to order your steps. And I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, that he's not going to order your steps and want you to be still. If he's going to order your step, look at your neighbor and say, you got to go. Uh, and if you can go, uh, then he'll lower every mountain. He'll raise every valley. He'll open up blood waters. Uh, he'll make a way out of no way. God says you got to release it. Watch this, not only, not only RS, RSVP, not only do you release, uh, uh, but he says if you're going to move from the dark uh, in the field and get to the city where the blessing is, uh, he says you got to see what he said. See what, what he said. It's, if, if I could, I just kind of want to teach here uh, because what the shepherds do is they look at each other and they say to each other, let's go to this place that the angels told us about. Oh, this is interesting because they have never met Mary. They do not know Joseph. They've never seen Jesus. Yet they're now going looking for something they've never seen before. Oh, gosh, watch this. Uh, that, that they are now required to walk by faith, not by sight. And if we're not careful, we will let what other people have said to us determine what we see. But you're never supposed to live your life, my brother and sister, by what people have said. What you live by is a word from the Lord. The angel, uh, the angel said to them, there's a baby in Jerusalem. But in order to get to the baby, I need you to leave where you are to go to where the baby is at. Uh, and they said, let's go see. Here it is. Let's go see one more time. Let's go see this thing they were talking about. Oh, God, I wish you'd get that. Uh, because what God does when he speaks to us is he initiates the faith process. That God rarely wants you to live off of what he says the first time. What he says the first time initiates the process so that you have to move forward so that you can see what he said. That's why when the doctor gives you a negative report, you don't have to break down and buckle because that's just the initiation of the process. What the doctor does is start the faith building process in you. Uh, he or she shows you what's on the scan so that your faith can go into motion so that you can then see what God said. Watch this. Uh, what the doctor starts off with might not look good, uh, but if you go looking for what God said uh, before it's over, you'll find healing in the hospital. Hospital. That's why the doctor can be used by God. Okay, y'all don't listen to me. Listen, uh, sometimes it can start off bad, but if you keep going after what God said, he'll change what you see. Uh, that's what happened to Hezekiah. Y'all remember hands? Uh, the Bible says that they sent a prophet doctor to Hezekiah, told him to get his house in order. Uh, he packed everything up, called all of his friends, uh, but then he turned his face to the wall. Uh, and he started to pray, said, wait a minute, God, what I heard is not what you say. Uh, the, the doctor came back into the room uh, and said, hold on, God told me to change what he told you. Uh, he wants you to know you now have 15 more years of life. Uh, and can I tell someone that when you seek after what God said, it don't matter what people have said. Uh, it won't matter what others have mumbled. It won't matter what they have rumored. Uh, at the end of the day, if you see what God said, uh, then everything will be all right. Uh, if I could, I'd tell you that you ought to live your life not based on what they say, but what he said. And he said you're the head and not the tail. Don't live your life based on what your bank account said. Go on what he said. He said you're the lender and not the borrower. Don't, uh, don't live your life based on what people are, are saying about you. Live it based on what he said. He said that you are fearful and wonderfully made. Uh, he said you are the royal priesthood. Uh, he said you will live and not die. Uh, he said train up a child in the way that they should go. When they are old, they will not die apart from it. He said that all things will work together for your good. He said that by his stripes you shall be healed. Look at your neighbor and say, you better see what he said. Here they are, mama's son, the angels. The angels told them to go. So they said, you know what? We're going to do what they said. We're going we're gonna to look for it even though they had not seen it yet. They pack up their things, throw them into the back of that ram truck, and they start moving towards Jerusalem. 
over the river, through the woods, past the lions, tigers, and bear. Oh my. Uh, they, they make it now into Jerusalem. And it's interesting because uh, they were told to go find Jesus. V, uh, v, uh, v value the process because when they get to Jesus, the Bible says they first find Mary and then Joseph and then the baby. Now, that may not be big for you, but that's important to me because no one mentioned Mary. No one mentioned Joseph. The angel said there's a baby that has been born. But in order for them to get the blessing, they have to value the process. That often God wraps his blessings up in having you go through people. <laughs> that the only way they can get to Jesus is that they first have to go through Mary and Joseph and then they find little baby Jesus. Uh, but you got to understand that's God's process and most of us will turn our backs on God leave him too quickly because we thought that since he said we were going to see the Messiah that we could just close our eyes and pray and the prayer will be answered and we thought that if we showed up to the sanctuary and threw up our hands uh, uh, then the praise would be enough for God to cause us to prosper and we thought that if we joined the deacon's ministry became a preacher sung in the choir sat down in the pew then God was going to instantaneously bring the blessing show the miracle and give us the favor but God has a process and oftentimes God uses people to bring forth his promise. Oh God, I wish I had somebody there. Uh, and I know what you're thinking. You said, no, I, I have my own relationship with the Lord. I can get it from him directly. Uh, then why would he say, uh, uh, how can you love uh, uh, those people around you, uh, hate people around you, uh, but then say you love me whom you've never seen? Uh, why would he say that I will judge you based on how you judge others? Uh, why would he say I will forgive you uh, based on how you forgive others. God's process is he connects you to people and then the people connect you to him. Now you can praise him without the people but when all of God's children get together or something happens because when two or three are gathered in his name, look at your neighbor and say you gotta value the process. I'm closing. They were standing in the field. God says to them, I've got an invitation for you that you will not be like this always. Trouble will not last always. You, you started out in the dark. You started out with the sheep. You started out in the cold. But there's a party going on in Jerusalem. All I need you to do is R.S. VP, oh, you got to release some things. S, uh, you've got to go see what they said. V, you've got to value the process. But then the Bible says after these shepherds lay their eyes on Jesus, uh, after they see little baby Jesus in the manger, after uh, they greet Mary and they talk to Joseph, uh, the Bible says that they leave praising God. That's a good part there. That when they walk away, they leave giving God praise. That when they turn around, they don't leave the same way that they came in. That, that after they met the Lord, things are now different for them. And I'd be remiss if I just closed by saying, you ought to praise God. It's a little deeper than that. Because they're praising him, and he's still a baby. He has not yet crawled or walked on water, but they're giving him praise. He can't speak yet, so he hasn't said, peace be still, to the storm but they're giving him praise. Uh, he's not able to lay hands uh, and open the eyes of the blind uh, or touch the legs uh, of the paralytic, but they're still uh, giving him praise. Uh, he has not yet uh, touched a dead man and told him uh, to come back to life, yet they're still uh, giving him praise. Uh, and can I tell you, that's what an invitation does. Uh, an invitation allows you to give God praise uh, before you see the blessing. Uh, an invitation calls Causes you to lift up your hands uh, before God does the healing. Uh, an invitation allows you uh, to tell God thank you before your children come back home. Uh, an invitation causes you to tell God uh, hallelujah before your body is healed. Uh, a matter of fact, I need you to look at your neighbor and ask him, what are you waiting for? Uh, because if you wait uh, until he grows up to bless him, uh, then you waited too long. Uh, but you've got to learn how to give God praise while you're on your way. You've got to learn how to give God praise until
feel the healing comes. You've got to learn to give God praise until the deliverance shows up. Look at your neighbor and say, give him praise. I'm getting ready to go to my seat. But I like what happens in the text. Because in the text, God sees some shepherds standing in the dark. They're standing in the field. Uh, they're in the dark. They're in the field. They're in the cola. But God says, I see you where you are. So what I'll do is I'll give you uh, an invitation. I'm inviting you uh, to come to the town uh, of David because there a Savior has been born. Uh, the Savior that's been born, he will bring joy to the world. Uh, the Savior that's been born, uh, he will uh, bring peace to your mind. Uh, the Savior that has been born, he will uh, bring healing to your body. Uh, can I tell you, God sent me today with an invitation. Uh, he told me, invite you to a brand new life that you don't have to stay where you are you don't have to be the way you've been you don't have to hurt the way you've hurt you don't have to cry the way you cry you don't have to be down the way you've been down God says I'm inviting you to have more that's what Calvary is all about that on one Friday they stretched him wide and lifted him high but notice they did it at a party it's a party known as Passover because God shows up at parties a matter of fact it wasn't his first party but his first miracle he did at a party it was a wedding reception that he turned water into wine because God loves to show up at a party and can I remind you that since he loves to show up at a party do you want not sit still and wait for the music to play that since he loves to show up to a party you ought not wait until someone asks you to dance but when you think about the goodness of Jesus and what he does on Friday then you want to give him praise because on that Friday he did die but early on Sunday morning he rose from the grave so that you could have your party I dare you to touch your neighbor and say I'm inviting you to get back your joy I'm inviting you to get back your peace I'm inviting you to get back your heart somebody shout you are invited Jesus Jesus shows up in the city of David born in a manger and while it was good to know that he was real he existed there were a whole group of people there were a whole group of people in St. Mark and Port Smith, Norfolk, Chesapeake. There were a whole group of people who had heard about him. They heard others talking about him. But they were just nearby. They couldn't tell anyone because people already thought that they were holy, already thought that they were good, already thought they were blessed. So they covered up their hurt by working in the dark. One day, one day God shows up. He says, hey, I see you doing the work and still not receiving the blessing. So here's what I want to do. I want to invite you to where I am. And today I want to do the same. I know many of you know Jesus Christ for yourself. I know many of you have been in church before. Here's, here's the question today. The question is, will you RSVP? for the favor God has on your life. It's, it's, it's way too easy to keep watching other people do it and listening to other people talk about it and hoping that it's going to happen to you. God, God says, today you've been invited. That finally it's your turn. Young people, this is not Drake God's plan. This is a real God's plan that works. This is, this is God saying, I've seen you, I know you, and I know your name, and what is ahead is better than what has been, that in this Advent season, God wants to release you into glory. We want to open up the doors of the church and offer Jesus Christ to you. If you're here and you do not know Jesus, this is a great opportunity to get to know him. 
listen, more than just another Sunday morning, this day, God wants to know, will you accept him for yourself? Here's what we know, for God so loved the world that he gave his son for you. For, for God so loved the world that he is inviting you to what will be great. If there's anyone, man, woman, boy, girl, child, family, that can say, you know what, I want Jesus Christ. I want, I want to know that I don't have to stay on the margins of life. Come on, today's a great day to get to know Jesus. Is there anyone? Thank you for watching the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church broadcast. If you would like a copy of today's message in its entirety, please send your request to St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church, 2714 Frederick Boulevard, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. Please include the title of the message and send your check or money order for $15 for a CD and $20 for a DVD payable to St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. The cost includes shipping and handling. We pray you've been blessed by the message. Join us again next week. And remember to let the redeemed of the Lord say so.